We acknowledge that this event is taking place upon the traditional territories, the territories of the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations Confederacy, the Anishinaabe peoples of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations, and before them, the Chinantan Nation, called the Neutral by the French and the Attawandaran by the surrounding nations. These people are the original caretakers, the peoples that lived on and intimately worked with these lands. We acknowledge that we have a responsibility to know and understand their heritage. The treaty that was signed for this territory is the Between the Lakes Treaty No. 3 of 1792, and further the deed referred to as the Haldeman Proclamation of 1784, which applies to the land six miles on either side of the Grand River, from the mouth to its source. We need to be aware of our role in these documents. We also recognize the enduring presence of Indigenous peoples upon this land. We acknowledge that we have an obligation to learn to live wisely together on this land. Hello and welcome to the Adelaide Hunter Hoodless Homestead. My name is Mary Derbyshire and I'm a volunteer here at the homestead. I've been involved here for probably the better part of the last 20 years. I'm a Women's Institute member from St. George Women's Institute. I live in Brantford and I'm a member of the Brant Historical Society as well. And I'm pleased to be able to welcome you to this wonderful home and share with you a little bit of the story of the little girl who was born into this home in 1857 and went on to do wonderful things for Canadian families. She had a very humble beginning in this 19th century farmhouse. She was born in 1857, the youngest of 12 children, and her father unfortunately died when she was a baby. So her mother and her older sisters raised her in this farmhouse. And she went on to much greater things as she grew into adulthood. And many of her accomplishments started with the education and the upbringing that she got in this home. The house itself is a good example of a 19th century farm dwelling. It's very interesting, I always found, and it's one of my favorite places to visit and to be involved with. It was built in 1830 by John Bray, and the beginnings of the house was very small, as many homes were in those years. It was a log, a log dwelling to begin with. And John Bray was gifted this land because of his involvement with the War of 1812. So men that served in the militias in these areas were gifted land to, as part of their compensation, I suppose, for what they did during the war. Anyway, he built and built a modest log dwelling, and then it had, has been added to over the years, and becomes what you see today. Adelaide's father, David Hunter, bought the property in 1851. And in 1857, Adelaide was born into this home. So, she grew up here. She went to um, school just down the, down the road at the old German elementary school, which unfortunately is no longer longer there, and she worked hard on the farm along with her mother and her siblings because everybody had to pitch in and help, much the same as it is today on, in a farm family. So she was no stranger to hard work. Adelaide knew how to work from the time she was small. And she um, was also encouraged by her mother and her siblings to become educated as they could be in those days. 
This family had many um, opportunities, I think, to enjoy reading and um, they were involved in the church in St. George and so they had not a high class life but a pretty good middle class life I would think for farm families. So here in this first room of the homestead as you would come in the door for a visit and we do hope you're going to come and visit the actual museum. Um, we have a, a set up here that shows a lot of Adelaide's later accomplishments and we'll get into that story as well as to how that all happened. But maybe you'd like to take a look um, via the video at some of the panels and the things that she eventually became involved with. And those accomplishments happened after she was married and lived in Hamilton. So she got involved with the YWCA, the Victorian Order of Nurses, the Council of Women, and she was instrumental in beginning the Women's Institute movement. And all this in interest and social activism happened when she lost her tiny baby at the age of about 14 months of age. Anyway, this is where we display many of the old artifacts that, that we have accumulated. Um, unfortunately, not too many things in the house that you will see actually belonged to Adelaide, um, but they've been generously donated over the years by many, many people in the community, um, from far and wide in the Women's Institute movement, and we're even still today accepting artifacts uh, that would pertain to this home. It has been furnished in probably the um, era that Adelaide lived here, which would have been 1857 to her marriage in 1881. And that's when she moved from this home. So it's a mid 19th century home filled with as many pertinent artifacts as we could, we could accumulate and use. And this is where people can take a look in, in the uh, display cases and see parasols and gloves and hats and hat pins and, and um, little uh, cups that you use for, for someone that's sick. And, and there's books and there's a baby bottles and various, various items that uh, pertain to Adelaide's life here. There's pictures on the wall of her involvement with the Women's Institutes, along with Erland and Janet Lee, and I will tell you about their involvement as we go along. A lovely picture of Adelaide as a younger woman, and a nice photo, um, felt picture done of the homestead itself. Now this is a, this is a good shot of the homestead as it would have been in her day, with a summer kitchen on the back, which has since been removed. But that's a, that's a very good old picture of what the house looked like in Adelaide's time. Now these people aren't related at all to Adelaide, but the, the house would have looked very similar to that at the time. So this, as we move out of this room, We'll start our, our actual good look at the, um, the house itself and how it was used. And this is as accurate as we can determine. There aren't a lot of actual records as to history of the house. So we have pieced together what we believe is going to be pretty close to the truth as to how this house was used. 
So this is the pantry and it's uh, it's been furnished with many artifacts um, that would pertain to housekeeping in, in homes of that era. And um, I must apologize for the plastic coverings you're going to see. I wish you could see it without coverings. And hopefully in the next year with COVID restrictions lifting, we may be able to show it like it was before. However, we have a Hoosier cupboard, we have many home making uh, articles such as uh, sealer jars to, to preserve your, your fruits and vegetables and we have sieves and we have um, candle uh, molds for making your own candles. Um, we have a mangle so you can, uh, you can get your, your sheets all nice and straightened and we have um, an old dry sink that, that would have been used in those days and, uh, and some cupboard work here for, for our, uh, your articles that you need for your kitchenware. And uh, so this would have been the entry off the old summer kitchen would have been behind us here, um, which obviously is no longer part of the home. And, uh, and then there's the cellar way down to go. It has a wonderful dry cellar for a house like this. And there is also a hearth, a cooking hearth. So the original house, all the cooking would have been done in the basement. And, um, and it was only in later years that stoves were um, obtained, uh, cooking stoves that is, a cook stove. Um, which we used to have, we did used to have a cook stove, um, but it is no longer part of the homestead. However, um, this, this room would have been a hive of activity with that many people living in the house. Mrs. Hunter and Adelaide and her older sister Lily, uh, Lizzie, pardon me, would have been very, very busy making meals and preparing food. Um, Adelaide had 10 brothers, so they, as you know, young men like to eat and they would be farm workers. So there was a lot of activity going on in, in this area of the house between the, the back kitchen, summer kitchen, and then this area as well. So we'll carry on into what uh, we have as our parlor. So this is the parlor, and in Adelaide's day, I know the parlor has a connotation that it's the room that gets locked and only used on Sundays. However, we have found that in Adelaide's time, this parlor was more like what we would say today as a family room. It was used every day, every night. They would congregate in this room and they would read, they would play games, they would probably have had a stereopticon to look at pictures on, um, they would have interacted with each other as to what had happened during their day. Um, those who were going to school would maybe have had work to do that pertained to their schoolwork. And so this room was lived in. It wasn't just locked up for a Sunday visit from, from the minister and his wife. Um, so par the, the connotation of parlor um, was different for Adelaide's family. They, they really did use this room. And so we have been fortunate enough to obtain from some donor, um, and I forget who, um, gave the pump, uh, the pump organ. And actually, it does work. Um, I can remember earlier in my days here, um, the Women's Institute would quite often have teas. Now, this is a no-no now because this is a museum and you don't sit on the furniture. However, we used to do things like that and not knowing that we shouldn't. And one of our members would play Christmas carols on, on the organ. So. We, um, we used to really enjoy this room, perhaps somewhat like Adelaide and, and her family did. 
Um, we have some pictures of the family. Um, Adelaide and three of her children are up on the, on the side here. Her mother, uh, Jane Hamilton Hunter, this lovely picture of her as an older woman. And this is the love of Adelaide's life, John Hoodless, who she married in 1881. Now we talked about that earlier in the exhibit room and uh, the, the story is that Adelaide was able to attend ladies college in the late 17 or 1870s. Her sister Lizzie married a man named Seth Charlton and he lived in Canesville. And so Adelaide moved to Canesville to live with her sister and attend Brantford Ladies College. Now we're not totally sure how many, how long a stretch of time she had there, but she did have some further education thanks to her older sister. And it was through Lizzie and Seth that Adelaide was able to meet John Hoodless, who was the son of a, manuf a furniture manufacturer from Hamilton. Quite a successful business apparently, the Hoodless um, Furniture Manufacturing Company. And so uh, they met and they fell in love and they were married at Lizzie and Seth's home in Canesville in 1881 and began a wonderful life in Hamilton. Adelaide really did do well in her marriage. She, she moved up the social ladder for sure. They had a wonderful mansion type home called East Court um, down on Main Street in Hamilton and they were living the good life. Adelaide had, had home uh, helpers in the home, she had servants uh, I do think she did the cooking, but um, anyway, the family started to come along and she, her children were born, four children, 1882, 84, 86, and the baby was born in 1888. And his name was John, and he was, he was the baby of the family, doted on by all, of course. And unfortunately, when he was a toddler, he died quite suddenly, and it turns out that he died of stomach uh, issues called summer complaint. And this quite often happened with young children and babies um, because of the heat in the summer and the um, flies and the disease. Quite often the milk got contaminated that they fed their, their children. And so Adelaide, of course, the family was devastated with what happened to baby John and she delved into the reasons behind it and was mortified to find out that she might have prevented her baby's death. So that would have done in many women in those days. They would have just given up. But not Adelaide. She used that as her her force of nature to move on for, and use her grief to find out uh, what she could about food preparation, about the safety of milk, about how pasteurization worked, and she lobbied the Hamilton dairies to start pasteurizing their milk. And from that moment, she just didn't quit. She felt that if she, as a fairly well-educated young mother and homemaker, did not know about these issues of food preparation and food safety, how many other, especially rural women, didn't know? So she lobbied and worked hard and, you know, it's all in the history books, it's on out there for you to look at the details, but she really worked hard to advance domestic science education. And her claim was always to make life better for families, to make life better for women, to educate women that didn't have a chance for education. 
And so, so many things came from that tragedy when she lost her baby. And so a lot of, a lot of the intellect and the um, expertise that she was able to muster to work as an adult started right here in these interactions that she had with her family. Her mother was always, always um, uh, admonishing those children to get as much education as they possibly could. Uh, two of her older brothers became doctors, medical doctors. One of her brothers was um, a high school principal in Woodstock. The other, two or three of the other boys stayed on the farm and worked the farm and made it successful. And so all those children really benefited from the way they were raised. And Adelaide has gone on to be a very important um, contributor to the education of women, to the education for families, and for the advancement of domestic science. Life in the parlor was, was very comfortable. Um, they would have had a stove, a heating stove, very similar to this one. This is a Franklin stove, wood stove, and it was the first artifact that was ever donated to this home after the Women's Institutes of Canada uh, bought it in 1959. And so this was our first, and this rocking chair, who this lovely lady is sitting in, <laughs> depicting possibly an outfit that Adelaide would have worn as a, as a matron when she lived in Hamilton. She probably didn't have something quite as lovely when she lived here, but I won't say that for sure, because I don't know. However, the rocking chair that the lady's sitting in was donated by Mrs. Harry Nixon from St. George. And Mrs. Nixon was a member of the St. George Women's Institute who was very um, instrumental in encouraging the Women's Institute to buy this property and save it basically as, as a memorial for uh, Adelaide's memory and for Adelaide's work that she did for, for society. Um, Harry Nixon was the member of provincial parliament for Brant County for many, many years. And his son, um, Robert Nixon, went on to, to fulfill his dad's, um, uh, follow in his dad's footsteps after Harry died. And then Jane Stewart, uh, Robert Nixon's daughter, uh, also went into federal politics. So we've had quite a quite a history of politicians that had something to do with this homestead. Um, it was, as I say, for, uh, purchased in 1959, and uh, prior to that there had been a few other uh, owners. Uh, it was sold by uh, Adelaide's oldest brother, Alec, in 1905, so the family the Hunter family lived here from 1851 to 1905, and then uh, there were probably about four other owners between 1905 and 1959. And fortunately, we were able to still um, keep the homestead. Uh, some of you may have seen recently that we, uh, we were on the brink of maybe having no other option but to sell it. And uh, that was going to be a very sad thing for the organization to do. And fortunately, we've had some lovely offers of help. And um, as you well know, anyone, one of you that has anything to do with a, a historic home, um, an old home period, doesn't have to be historic, they always need something done to them and it always costs money. So we're very fortunate that uh, the homestead has received a reprieve and we are encouraging people to help us keep it afloat. And uh, any, any donations are, are certainly um, very welcomed and uh, we shall 
keep you informed as to how how it uh, continues on. Uh, but this this room was was just um, just a lovely place to entertain their their uh, neighbors and friends. But as I said earlier, it was used by the family. It was it was not just a special room. The flooring is. Um, similar to what would have been on the floor. It's all pl uh, plank uh, wood flooring that's pretty much, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty much um, authentic to, to when it was built. All, all the things are original, the base, the high baseboards and, uh, and whatnot. Um, but this flooring, these rag rugs that were um, produced, um, would have been of the time. Families would have had these these rugs in their uh, good rooms, I suppose you would say, and um, they were able to be reproduced by Mennonite women in um, up in the St. Jacobs area. Um, so these have stood the test of time because I think these rugs were put down fairly recently, uh, or fairly soon, after the homestead was purchased. So I would say these rugs probably date from about the 1960s. So they've, they've held up very well. Sometimes they need repair, but all, all sorts of things need repair. Um, the decoration was done over time, um, mostly by Women's Institute members. Um, some professional help, but a lot of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and hard work went into transforming the house as it was when it was purchased into what you see today, which which is very very lovely. And uh, so we will proceed from here and go into the dining room. This room has been. Uh, designated the dining room for many, many years and decorated as such. And it actually is one of my favorite rooms in the house. I love the light that comes from the eastern and southern exposure. I love the size of it. I especially love, there's a lovely arch here with doors that fold back, which I think is a wonderful um, architectural amenity and the the wide plank floors um, it just it just to me is a very homey homey room and uh, many many joyous occasions took place I'm sure in this room when Adelaide lived here and uh, all these children around a big much bigger table than we show today uh, would have, would have been enjoying their meals and, uh, and having family time here. Um, we have a few artifacts um, that are still um, part of the family. Pink dishes on the table, and we don't have a complete set, but the dishes uh, were Adelaide's mother's. So those belong to Jane Hamilton Hunter. And we have had, in past years, um, a tea service, silver tea service, that was Adelaide's from her years. I think it may be, it may be still in the room, um, not not in the camera's shot right at the moment, but um, that belonged to Adelaide. And a cup and saucer that I don't actually see at the moment. So we do rotate the artifacts, so it's probably been put away for a while. But there's. Um, there's a lovely ambiance, I believe, to this room, and uh, it's, it's just um, lovely. This lovely portrait of Adelaide hangs in the foyer of, of the home, um, right beside, behind the front door, and it was commissioned by the University of Guelph to commemorate Adelaide's work in establishing MacDonald Institute at the university, which eventually became part of the University of Guelph. 
and that was the first one of the first domestic science uh, schools, normal schools, for domestic science teachers. So this is a lovely portrait of Adelaide as an older woman, um, taken when she was in her late 40s, quite likely, and uh, not too many years before her untimely death at, uh, on the eve of her 53rd birthday. And uh, it was a lovely gift of the, um, the university because she did so much work trying to get domestic science into the school system. She um, worked hard to get these uh, normal uh, teaching schools uh, for, the, for the domestic science teachers and to attend and um, that was a big, big part of her activism after she lost her child. Okay, now we're in the boys' room. Uh, this is what we've designated as, as the boys' bedroom. And with all those brothers, they would have had to pack them in like sardines and two to a bed for sure and also trundle beds that would pull out from under the bed and uh, pretty tight quarters in here. But as I want you to realize that when Adelaide was born, not all the family still lived at home. Many of the older children would have already left living in this house, so it, it wasn't quite as crowded as you might think other than when they came home for a visit. And uh, so they, they would have uh, been early to bed and early to rise when they lived here, as many, uh, many early uh, farm families were. Uh, and they had, uh, I don't know if they would have had bookshelves in the bedrooms, but we have provided, we've been, uh, gifted so many wonderful old books that uh, we have put a, a book case in here. Um, I'm not sure whether the boys would have used that or not. And um, whether they would have done their homework up here, I'm not sure. But they have they had uh, games that they could have played when they were young young folk. We have an old trunk that they would have stored blankets and various things in. Um, most families had a, had a trunk in the corner somewhere um, from the families in the past coming over from the old country. Um, they, uh, the Hunter family did come from Ireland and uh, settled first in the Toronto area, uh, Brampton area, and then dispersed uh, from there throughout Ontario. There are still quite a few hunter relatives. Uh, in the year 2000, we had a, a, a project where we had a big family, hunter family reunion. So we invited as many as we could track down to come back to the, to the homestead and, and see what was, uh, what was done over the years here. And uh, as I said earlier, um, one of the, two of the boys became medical doctors. So we've we've been gifted a, a doctor's bag and uh, some uh, items that were actually the doctor's bag is not uh, an original to the family, but the pewter candlestick on on the writing desk did belong to the Hunter family. So that's an original, like the pink dishes downstairs. But unfortunately, we just don't have a whole lot that were actual possessions of the family. Adelaide's family actually has died out. There, are, there were no male heirs um, after her, her children. Um, her two daughters, of course, married, um, and then her son uh, married, but he had no he had no heirs. So there there's no 
there's no hoodless uh, line anymore. Her her line has as a hoodless has has died out. However, we try to keep her memory and her her legacy alive by encouraging folks like you to come out and visit the homestead and enjoy our programs as we get back into doing that. Now, now we're in Adelaide's bedroom. We're not, again, totally sure this was where she slept, but we have decided that this is where Adelaide slept. And she had um, a lovely room, as all these rooms are. Lots of light from these wonderful windows, and um, this room, interestingly enough, has linoleum flooring, and apparently that would have been available um, in the late 1800s um, into the 1900s. Um, she also, we also have been gifted a rope bed, and I'm sure most of you maybe know what a rope bed is. The ropes go between the frame of the bed and then a straw mattress is put on top. So that's a very old method of making a bed. Not very comfortable, I don't think. Pretty lumpy. Um, we have a dress here that would possibly have been very similar to what Adelaide and her mother would have worn. We have a night uh, stand here with with the wash stand, um, washing uh, up a set uh, of a jug and a, and a basin. And of course, you would have to bring your water up from below um, in the kitchen where it would have been um, heated and uh, do your personal hygiene activities in your bedroom, as there was no bathroom in those days. And. Uh, obviously outdoor facilities for the privy, but uh, your washing up would have been done in your own bedroom. So many, many homes had these wonderful uh, wash sets. That one's pretty basic. I think we probably have another one that's in one of the other bedrooms that's a little more ornate, because some of them were extremely beautiful pieces of china. And uh, we have an, an old doll that perhaps Adelaide might have played with, and uh, a desk where she might have done some of her schoolwork. And uh, it's just a nice, a nice room um, to portray a girl's bedroom in those days. And now we're in Jane Hamilton Hunter's bedroom, which is another lovely room in this house. It's uh, very, very spacious. Um, Jane would have had lots of, lots of space. Um, we're, we're thinking perhaps before it was Jane's, it could have been used by, you know, you could have more than one bed in here for sure because of the expanse of floor space. But at the moment, it's a, it's a lovely room for an older lady and uh, she has, has her quilts, um, she has her sewing box and her sewing uh, duffel bag here. There's a beautiful um, uh, what uh, we call this the cherub because it's a cherub with a hook in his hand and then he's got a little a little shell shaped container there and a drawer that opens. So we always ask visitors, what do you think that is for? And this belonged to Adelaide's father. So it's a very ornate piece of, and it's silver. And uh, so it would have been kind of a treasure for the family. And what it's used for is to, to hang a pocket watch on. You hang the pocket watch chain on the hook. The watch itself sits down in here and cufflinks or tie tacks or um, studs 
for for a man's shirt um, could be put in the drawer. So it's kind of a unique item, and that is one that was uh, belonging to her father. So it's it's a treasure. Um, Jane may have done some work by the window here. You know, light was always an issue, and uh, so she may have sat by the window to do spinning, um, or knitting, or needlework, or darning of socks. There were probably lots of socks to be darned in that family, and uh, she just had a lovely, a lovely area to work, to work in, and to sleep in. This room has a very unique amenity and that's called the four o'clock stove. You can see this little stove beside the bed. Um, it's always fun when we have tours to ask people if they have any idea why it would be called four o'clock. And the reason is that the, the uh, stove would be lit at four o'clock in the afternoon in order to warm the bedrooms up, this bedroom up for sleeping later in the in the evening and uh, so there's a wood box beside it and our little four o'clock stove which is quite tiny and petite and interesting and always provokes a lot of attention and on Jane's bed there's a beautiful quilt and this quilt belonged to the family and so that's another one of our special artifacts and it's called a bear paw quilt or duck's feet, and apparently uh, the legend has it that these quilts uh, also were a signal for the Underground Railroad uh, uh, people who were were escaping slavery in in the United States and came to Canada. So that's a definite treasure. And then, as I was saying in the other room. We had have a beautiful uh, wash set, and this is a complete wash set that's very colorful and um, feminine uh, looking with its with its floral pattern. Um, we have all pieces, including the the chamber pot and uh, the slop bucket, as you, we used to call it, but that's not a bucket. That's a beautiful piece piece of porcelain. So um, we're very pleased to have some lovely artifacts to show you when you come over to visit us. Okay, in this area at the front of the house, between the front bedrooms, is a lovely sitting area. And probably in Adelaide's days here, quite Possibly there might have been a sewing machine in this area that uh, her mother and the girls would have used where there's a lot of natural light. Um, in our representation of it at the moment, we have a lady's writing desk. And this writing desk is very, very precious to this homestead because it was manufactured at the Hoodless Furniture Company in Hamilton. One of these drawers has an imprint in the side of their logo for their company. And in the late 1990s, uh, we used to have antique roadshow types of uh, fundraisers here. And we would have an appraiser come from Hamilton to talk to us about, you know, people could bring in their artifacts to be appraised. And uh, it was a good, a good afternoon. So we had this gentleman come, and uh, so he was very well aware of the homestead and, and the story behind the homestead, etc., etc. So after one of our events, he contacted the curator at the time and said, I think I have some, I've come upon something that you may like to uh, consider purchasing. This desk was in a coach house of an old property in Hamilton 
that this man had been called in to appraise the furniture in. It was sitting out in this coach house with a piece of plywood over the top of it, and it was in this condition. All it had to be was cleaned. So, of course, we s immediately found the money to buy this, this beautiful desk. It's a ladies' writing desk. And whether there was one like it here or not, when Adelaide and her mother lived here, we don't know, but it's, it's another treasure that's lovely to see, especially without the plastic. I'm sorry about that, but we have to leave that on for now. This is Adelaide's oldest brother's bedroom. He and his wife and some of their young children would have inhabited this room. Um, as I said, her dad died when she was a tiny, uh, ch tiny baby. And uh, so Alec and his wife took over running the farm uh, from, from dad. Uh, and so they moved into the master bedroom and uh, had young children. So this is this is typical of, of what the master bedroom, or I guess now we call them the principal bedrooms of a house would be. It has uh, a very unique heatilator. Um, there would have been a wood stove down below in the room down below that would feed hot air would come up through this pipe to the chimney, of course, and it would be radiated out into the into the room. So this is another artifact that's kind of interesting to talk about. Um, possibly Alec's wife would have would have done some spinning and uh, definitely would have done some sewing. Uh, whereas I think the sewing probably would have been done in the hallway. However, she could have done sewing here um, with this in front of the window. Um, and it's a lovely big, another lovely big bedroom. So there could have been more than, more than two baby cribs in here at the same time. There might have been a smaller child's bed as well. But uh, everybody had to, to team up and uh, enjoy. Here's another washstand set that's a little more basic. It's uh, it's enamel, and uh, so. As I said before, there's a mustache cup here to see, and there's, there's in all the rooms, we've got um, oil lamps that have been electrified, um, so we have some extra light in here, because um, it would have been quite dark in those days, and that these would definitely have been oil lamps, not, not electric lamps. On the bed, we have a, a bed warmer called a, a stone pig, and they would fill that with hot water and bring it up to warm the bed up before bedtime. Uh, beautiful wicker um, uh, baby uh, cradle. And uh, we've just been very lucky to have so many wonderful things donated to this lovely old home that we do hope you will come and visit and uh, enjoy as we do. To look after it. I hope you've enjoyed our time together here at the Adelaide Hoodless Homestead. Um, I'd just like to also tell you another name for this property is the Willows. Um, when uh, people moved here uh, many willow trees were planted and they still surround the uh, property. So the other name for the homestead is the Willows. So please come out to the Willows. And uh, at the moment, we are still open by appointment only um, as things, uh, restrictions are lifted. I'm sure we will be having regular hours again at some point, hopefully in the near future, but a, a visit by appointment can definitely be booked uh, Monday to Friday uh, between 11 and uh, 4 p.m. the office is open uh, so please call ahead and uh, come and enjoy uh, learning more about Adelaide and her her wonderful homestead um, where she she began her journey to really um, affect uh, all of Canadian society which eventually 
affected people around the world through her w Women's Institute involvement in helping establish that, even though Adelaide was never a Women's Institute member. However, her ideas uh, sowed the seed for that organization to be uh, started and flourished and now it's a worldwide organization. So uh, that along with her other uh, accomplishments in the other areas that we talked about, um, she really was a woman ahead of her time and she would say one of her famous quotes is educate a man, educate a boy and you educate a man, but educate a girl and you educate a family. So thanks to Adelaide for all she did for many families that have come down to our present day. Thank you.